Hello everyone. Thank you for logging on to watch another presentation in New Farm's virtual learning series. I'm Chris Bowley, Customer and Brand Marketing Manager for New Farm. Today we'll be covering the topic of burn down weed control, particularly focusing on weed species such as kosher, mare's tail and pigweed. I'm pleased to pass you over to Dr. Dan Barron. Thanks, Chris. Again, this is Dan Barron, Technical Service Director for New Farm. And as Chris mentioned, we're going to be talking today about some best practices during burn down. And we'll use the key weeds of kochia, mare's tail, and pigweed species to kind of drive in and uh, review some of the best practices, as well as some products that New Farms developed, particularly with burn down in mind. So we're going to start with kochia here. And it's a familiar weed. It's an early emerging summer annual. It's often one of the first ones that we'll see out in the, the upper plain states. It's often found in conjunction with Russian thistle. We tend to think of it as a really common weed in wheat stubble, but its, it's geography has certainly expanded. It's a really problematic weed in a lot of crop systems because it, uh, it can be extremely competitive. Um, unlike maybe some other weeds, the pigweeds, things like that, it's not a huge seed producer, but as you can see, in that picture, it has a, a wonderful way of spreading across the landscape with uh, the tumbleweed motion spreading weed seeds, and that can obviously become much more problematic as we have resistance pop up. It can really move resistant weeds across the landscape and, and not just be confined to the field where it first develops. And so as these plants emerge in late February into summer, um, it certainly presents a challenge, especially with the rise of resistance. The first one that we would obviously think about is group nine or glyphosate resistance, but there's also widespread group two or ALS resistance. And then there are pockets of group four resistance, and that doesn't necessarily convey resistance to all group four herbicides, but uh, 2,4-D resistance is pretty much widespread with a few isolated areas and geographies maybe where uh, 2,4-D has not historically been used a lot, such as in cotton country. Um, but we do see pockets of, of resistance to things like dicamba in certain geographies and, and in other areas. We're starting to have more reports of fluoroxapyr resistance as well. And so burning down kochia can really be a challenge because it, uh, it becomes even more problematic once it becomes an, an in-crop weed. So our effective burn down actives that we think about and really focus on are dicamba and fluoroxapyr. Those are both obviously group four herbicides. And, and as I mentioned, there's some slippage in, in those in key geographies. So uh, stewarding and maintaining the efficacy of those two actives is really important. There's certainly been an increase in the use of paraquat or group 22 herbicide as an alternative in fallow to straight glyphosate. Um, another active ingredient that's been uh, more popular here recently in a burn down slash residual role is metribuzin, and that gets obviously used in combination with other products as well. Pyrosulfatol, that one's primarily used in crop, but again, allows another mode of action to be used to control uh, kochia. And then bromoxynil continues to be a really important active ingredient, a group six herbicide that provides contact activity in uh, in control of small kochia. So those are kind of our our key tools. And when we think of the the building blocks of our approach in our portfolio to kochia, the one product I like to start with is Burn Master. And so that's a combination of 2,4-D ester and dicamba acid. You know, the 2,4-D and dicamba products still are our, our big drivers when it comes to many, many uh, acres and, and geographies and burn down. And so this burn master formulation uh, utilizes an ester form of 2,4-D, which is going to be really effective on a broad range of weeds. The ester formulation also helps with greater mixing and compatibility with glyphosate formulations, fertilizer carriers, uh, hard water, all of those things. And then we have the dicamba, the active component that we think about for kochia is in the acid form. So you get quick uptake and again, good compatibility. We like that ester formulation primarily in geographies when we're going out just like you'd expect for kochia in the early spring. Uh, we like those ester formulations for cool weather, maybe compared to some other aiming based formulations of 2,4-D and dicamba. Now with the 
with the idea of kochia and the difficult weed that it is, one of the formulations and, and products that we built to address that is Scorch. And so we knew we had an effective combination with Burnmaster, and then we added another effective active ingredient in fluoroxapir to this formulation, specifically thinking of kochia. And so upon that uh, formulation, we've got the ester acid, ester 240 and acid of dicamba, and then added in a three quarters of a pound of fluoroxapir. Again, that's one of those group four active ingredients, as I've mentioned, that's very active on kochia. You know, on the typical use rate that we're talking about for for scorch is in that one to two pint range, depending on the size of weeds, uh, weed density, that sort of thing. But that's our typical use rate. And then also, this is a formulation that can be used in crop and cereals. It'd mainly be uh, winter wheat further west in probably some more dry land areas, things like that. And that can be used in crop and cereals at a half a pint to a pint. And so some of the evaluations that we conducted er early on as we were developing Scorch uh, illustrated the utility of this formulation, not only for fallow, but for in-crop control of kochia and other weeds in, in cereals. So building upon kind of this Scorch or Burnmaster concept using 2,4-D dicamba and fluoroxapir, one of the other uh, active ingredients that we focus on is Panther SC. So that brings in a group 14 uh, PPO herbicide that has contact burn down activity, plus it brings additional residual. And so that's been a really effective combination in trials as well as commercial applications. And so what we've got here on the screen is in the left hand side, the picture is of scorch at a pint and a half in the spring on a on a fairly thick stand of kosha. You can see in the background how thick some of the non-treated areas are, but you can kind of see this is very uh, soon after application. I believe this is about seven to 10 days after application, and you can see the control. Some of the larger ones are a little slower to go down, but then what we've done in this plot in the picture on your right is added in Panther SC to the scorch at two ounces per acre. And what we see out of that is you get the hasten burn down and greater control out of the gates of the kochia. And then we're bringing in the additional soil residual. So it not only helps with the burn down of scorch from a speed of activity, but then it's also bringing in the value of additional residual control. So I mentioned when we were first developing scorch, one of the areas we did look at was the control of kochia in crop. And so this happens to be scorch and burn master being done in winter wheat uh, in, in a trial in South Dakota. So I'll kind of walk you through this. The yellow bar is the coded name for scorch during development, but that is uh, the 1509 and a half a pint or scorch. And then a pint of scorch uh, is kind of the darker brown here. And so you can see out of the gates, it's a little bit hotter than uh, than maybe the burn master is. And then as you get further down the road, you can see pretty much excellent control with either product concept of either Scorch or burn master at a half a pint to a pint. Obviously with the crop competition, the control of kochia is gonna be a little bit easier. Now let's shift gears here and show some data in more of that typical fallow area. Here we're looking at fallow applications in Montana on the far left this would be the 12 days after treatment rating and here we've got scorch at just a pint and a half to two pints again only 12 days after after treatment the control is in the upper 70s to low 80s and then here's what i was referring to in that picture before we've gone ahead and taken the scorch rate back a little bit and then added in panther at either two or three ounces here as can be seen so especially at that early rating you can see the jump in control, but that that, that trend kind of continues at the 30 and 43 days after application. And you can see some of the other uh, combinations that can be used to bring in residual activity. Here's Zidua, um, which wouldn't bring in any additional uh, burn down, but obviously residual as well as metribuzin or tricor. So in this situation, kind of see we're using the scorch as a foundation with the flexibility of bringing in things like panther or metribuzin for additional burndown or 
or residual. So when we think about kosha management from a burn down perspective, you know, we like in cereals to address that with early pre-plant applications of a group 14, things like a panther. Um, there's other active ingredients that can be brought in post application, something like pyroxysulfone. The other products that are still very active and are popular to be used in crop in cereals, obviously low rates of dicamba can still be used in cereals, but really fluoroxapyr and bromoxynil are two of the heavy hitters when it comes to managing kochia in crop in cereals. But again, we like the, we like the burn down applications with, uh, with scorch and pre-plant applications of scorch and panther. When it comes to corn, probably a less problematic, kosha is probably a less problematic weed. There's a lot of options, but again, when you start to think about uh, rotating modes of actions and what we're leaning on, pretty much when it comes to corn, we're, we're using a lot of dicamba, we're using fluoroxapyr, our HPPD chemistries as well. So um, it may seem like there's more products, but we're still leaning on some of the, the key formulations and active ingredients in corn crops. Now, as soybeans have continued to grow in their expanse further west, they're kind of running into that traditional geography of where kochia has typically been a problem. And so soybeans and kochia management can be much more difficult. So again, some of our key recommendations would be is to utilize the group 14 herbicides. Panther SC is really popular. We like Panther and Metribuzin and uh, Panther Pro are all good combinations that bring in more than just uh, one effective mode of action. So you can get the Metribuzin and the Panther working together. And those can be very popular ahead of, you know, various platforms, whether it's, uh, you know, Enlist or Dicamba tolerant soybeans. So you're providing more diversity in the types of, of weapons you're deploying against kochia. And then obviously uh, with, the, with the rise of Dicamba tolerance, you know, Dicamba tolerant traits certainly bring in the opportunity to use Ingenia or Extendamax uh, for kochia management as well. Now, one of the areas, you know, kind of the traditional kochia battleground is in, is in the fall and in fallow applications. As you get west, it's very popular to use, you know, uh, a fall application, maybe coupled with the spring burn down. So again, our fall application recommendation in many geographies, you know, the, the Colorado, uh, Wyoming, Montana area is a fall application of Panther at uh, three to four ounces. And then with, uh, depending on the level of control and the cropping system that you're going for with in the spring, you can come back with a, with a spring burn down application of something like Burnmaster or Scorch. But again, kind of the whole uh, approach here is to use multiple modes of action and use formulations and active ingredients that are really built specifically for that cropping system or time. So kochia is a challenge. It's going to continue to become uh, more problematic as, as more, uh, more of the traits move west. We'll see more pressure on dicamba and kochia. So it's just going to be a difficult weed that will continue to have to be on top of our game to manage in, in burn down applications. All right, we'll shift gears here a little bit and move from kind of that central plains, western plains, to maybe more of the eastern corn belt and, and mid-south and talk about one of the key burn down weeds there, and that's mare's tail or horseweed. This one's a real common winter annual that I would say in most situations, it's most problematic in no-till soybean production, but uh, just like kochia is moving east, it seems, uh, this is one that's also becoming more problematic in the central plains as well, moving a bit west out of its traditional geography. The thing about mare's tail, uh, it can begin germinating in the fall and certainly can continue well into the spring. And the mare's tail that is most difficult con to control, especially in a burn down situation, are the plants that germinate in the fall, get a little bit of growth and get some root growth and more growing points uh, coming into a traditional spring burn down. And so, those are the plants that require maybe a more uh, comprehensive approach than maybe what a traditional burn down of a 2,4-D application in the spring alone has been done. And so when it does come to mare's tail, uh, getting ahead of it and treating those rosette plants in the fall 
can be a, a really good way to start and stay ahead of that. And if you can't get out that in the, out there in the fall, which as we know has happened in the past couple of falls, just with late harvest and, and wet weather, it's been difficult to have, be timely on top of Maristail. So we're in many cases looking at an early spring burn down that maybe needs to be a little more aggressive than, than would be needed if we were able to get out there in the fall. So when it comes to solutions or recommendations specifically for mare's tail in the early spring burn down window we like our burn master formulation again cool weather it's got the 2,4-D ester coupled with the dicamba acid you know weed master if you've got time uh it's going to be a good option as well and then we specifically will talk about spitfire as well which is one that's been built uh really specifically with mare's tail and kind of the soybean pre-plant window in mind and so when we think of that we get into more of a you know a 14 to 7 day pre-plant window we like spitfire at 20 to 32 ounces obviously pairing that with uh, uh, glyphosate formulation our lead one being credit extreme and then with a traditional say maybe the mare's tail hasn't gotten much size or it's mainly spring germinating mare's tail you know the we don't lv4 or lv6 applications can still be very effective but again the caveat being if you have fall germinators you're going to need to be a little more aggressive and that's where we would flip to more of a spitfire or burn master application and just like we talked about in kosha pairing up these group four herbicides with panther sc or panther pro can be a very effective way there you're bringing in the PPO burn down and residual coupled with the group four uh, translocated activity, those work together extremely well. And uh, when we talk about Panther Pro, you don't, you not only have the Panther PPO working in your advantage, you also bring in the burn down and the residual of Metribuzin as well. And I'll kind of share some, some data on that as we move along on that particular product or concept. So, with these 2,4-D and dicamba uh, premix combinations, when we think of mare's tail and pre-plant uh, burn down ahead of soybeans, we know the interval is going to be driven by the formulation and the dicamba, especially when you've got these 2,4-D uh, dicamba options available. And so we were thinking about that when we developed Spitfire and it has label allowance that allows it to be used at a shorter interval up to as short as seven days ahead of planting soybeans with some moisture at that 20 ounce rate and the reason why we think that's so important is because when we do get into areas where we need more uh, horsepower if you will to control mare's tail and here's kind of an example of it so here we're looking at some data on mare's tail performance in Tennessee from a trial a number of years ago when we were developing this concept so in the red bar we've got uh, spitfire at 20 ounces so let's focus in on that so eight days after treatment we're sitting at at uh, at 84 percent and then when we go uh, to 22 days after we're up to 95 percent so you know what that's showing us is that uh, we're getting good translocation and 22 days later we're not seeing regrowth and that's the problem if you have some size on your mare's tail you can think you've got it knocked down but it can come back. And that's kind of what we're showing here. You know, if you've got a tight uh, burn down window, a lot of times guys will flip to a sharpen knowing that they can go ahead and plant with it uh, right after application. But the downside of that is that it can look really good eight days after 94%, but if you didn't completely get it, you don't have the translocation of the 2,4-D dicamba, you're seeing re-sprout there with the 71% control at that 22 day rating. So the Spitfire combination, we really like that if the mare's tail has a little bit of size and the potential for regrowth. And we know that's a pretty common thing that can happen. So Spitfire has really been developed for this uh, shorter window mare's tail uh, applications ahead of soybeans. So we've talked a lot about mare's tail up to this point. You know, when you get into kind of the, maybe a more Southern geography, you can get into these situations on maybe delayed soybean planting, like we've had the last couple of springs in a lot of geographies. And you then may be dealing not only with mare's tail, but you can have other winter annuals, but then the, 
you know, one of the other problem weeds is Palmer amaranth can be starting to germinate as well during that burn down window. And so you got to be thinking about not only your winter annuals, but, uh, you know, are the things, are there some things you can do to maximize uh, maybe the efficacy on some of these summer annual problem weeds. And so here's the example again. So obviously we know Spitfire on mare's tail is going to do a great job. We've got Panther here in the in the the green bar here in the middle. So as a standalone, is the Panther is not something we'd recommend on on mare's tail. And you can see the level drop off there. Glyphosate, a lot of glyphosate resistant mare's tail. And so here's the example. We pull the Spitfire and the Panther together, like we've talked in some of the other examples, you can kind of get the best of both worlds. And you'll see that play out on the other weeds. So the growth regulators are, are effective on the uh, the Emerge Palmer Amaranth here, but as you know, unlike the winter annuals, you're not going to get just one or two flushes. So, you know, the Spitfire is taking care of the, the plants that are up, but by 24 days after, obviously there's a new flush and that's what we're seeing with that reduced control. Now with the Panther, we were able to probably burn down those existing plants, but we're still probably seeing a few more uh, that maybe slip through that burn down. And so we put the Spitfire and the Panther together. We've got burn down plus the burn ion from the Spitfire, but also the residual of the Panther. So again, we're pulling together kind of the best of both worlds. It's a, it's a similar theme, whether we're talking kochia, mare's tail, or uh, Palmer pigweed, we really like the combinations of Panther plus our Dicamba 2,4-D combinations, and in this case, Spitfire, with us going ahead of, of soybeans in a burn down window. You know, some other ways that we've kind of taken our portfolio and looked at how we can build upon some of these concepts. We've got two products here that uh, that pull together the attributes of Panther and are bringing along other residual products. So in the past couple of years, we've launched Panther Pro with it, which is a liquid flumioxazin, metribuzin and imazethapir three-way mix. It's a liquid. Um, the unique thing about this, and the reason why I like to talk about it during a burndown presentation is all three active ingredients in Panther Pro bring post-emerge burndown activity. And uh, those of us have, who have been around a while remember spraying uh, Pursuit as a, as a post product. So we've obviously got post activity there on some of those winter annuals that are still susceptible to, uh, to ALS herbicides. Metribuzin clearly has good post as well as residual activity. And then obviously, as we've shown, you know, the Panther component has good contact activity in addition to the, uh, to the residual. So with Panther Pro, you know, maximize its post activity when when it's used primarily in this burn down window. You can add in adjuvants that are going to help the the burn down activity. Crop oil and AMS is certainly going to help its activity. And then, obviously, those three components will kick in with the added benefit of residual. And so, it's a it's a great product to consider when we're talking no till soybeans and some of these pro problematic weeds. More recently. We're uh, introducing Panther MTZ, very similar concept with the exception of, of uh, the imazethapir is pulled out. Obviously, there's geographies where the imazethapir is going to have rotational concerns um, and things like that. And so, again, same loading as Panther Pro. As you can see there, a 12-ounce rate of Panther MTZ would have over a quarter pound of metribuzin, which gets you into that area where you're going to have good residual activity, and then the two ounce standard rate of Panther in that uh, in that 12 ounces of Panther MTZ or, or Panther Pro. So again, a good loading of all three products and uh, they're providing good post activity for this burn down window, plus uh, not shorten us on the residual components either. So I'll share with you a little bit of data around this and, and why we, we really talk about these products and combinations. So this goes back a ways uh, looking at uh, Panther MTZ and uh, a couple of competitive products. Here we're looking at Panther MTZ and Authority MTZ. So we've got kind of the two-way products here looking at Palmer Amaranth control in Tennessee. So I'll walk you through this slide here quickly. So all of these have a Spitfire credit extreme and at 14 days, uh, obviously, you're going to see see some effects of that burn down, but again, with a new flush, you're going to see plenty of new uh, 
Palmer amaranth. And so this red bar here is the burn down of Spitfire and Credit Extreme. And then we've got Panther MTZ in at 15 ounces. And so you can see 14 days after we're, we're doing well and the residual has kicked in. In contrast, the light green bar is Authority MTZ. And this happens to be one of those environments where the water solubility of Authority has uh, kind of worked against us. This area had more moisture, this particular trial did. And so we didn't lose that residual with the early pre-plant of Panther MTZ. Now the next two pairs of bars here in the purple and the orange are the same pairing, but those are applied as a pre, whereas the previous two were, were in a pre-plant. And so again, it just illustrates the importance of having a product that activates and then maybe doesn't move below the zone of uh, of activation and, and weed germination. And so you can kind of see that throughout the trial where the Panther MTZ held in, whether it was as a pre-plant or as a pre-emerged treatment. And here's some pictures from that trial. You can see the level of, of flush coming from just that pre-plant burn down alone of Spitfire and, Petter and Credit Extreme. So you burn them down, boom, you get a new flush. Here's the burn down plus the Panther MTZ. That's that pre-plant application that we were talking about. We really saw the separation between the Panther MTZ relative to the Authority MTZ. And you can see more, more of the Palmer pigweed coming through there. And then just a close up of, of kind of the pre-emerge application of, of the burn down followed by the pre-emerge Panther MTZ. So really, uh, a, a good trial to illustrate the attributes of of Panther and then having that added value of the the residual rate of metribuzin in the trial. So that was down in Tennessee. Here we're looking at Panther MTZ and Panther Pro up in North Dakota. So kind of two ends of the soybean growing area. But uh, as we all know, uh, the expanse of soybeans continues and it's uh, it's one that goes across many states and, and goes quite west. And so here what we're looking at is a number of different weeds at and their level of control before the post application so carried it out to 28 days before the in crop application of uh, of glyphosate came in and so on yellow foxtail like you might expect um you know panther pro in the purple is picking it up why is that uh it's because it has the imazethapir component whereas the panther MTZ does not. Uh, the Authority MTZ is this light blue one here. And so again, you can kind of see the difference. Now, once you get up into, uh, you know, the broadleaf weed ratings, you know, the, the red root pigweed, all are doing really well. Here we see the Panther Pro separate from the Panther MTZ. When we get with lamb's quarters, again, that imazethapir component kicking in a little bit as well. And you can kind of go across the various ratings um, throughout. But again, just the point being that with Panther MTZ and Panther Pro, depending on the weed spectrum that you have, you know, you may favor one product over the other, depending on what uh, what your post application scenario is as well, too. So bottom line, take a step back with uh, with our portfolio as we look at problematic weeds and burn down scenarios ahead of soybeans. We feel like we've got a really robust portfolio to address the burn down window and then residual products that carry in burn down as well. And so here's probably one of the best examples that I have of this. And this is from a, a re research plot at the at the Purdue University field day. And this was a burn down situation where we had Spitfire and Credit Extreme. So again, they were bringing in the additional 2,4-D and dicamba. The site had plenty of mare's tail. So that would really drive that Spitfire application. And then a couple weeks later, after the burn down, we came in with our pre-application of Panther Pro. So we've got Panther, Metribuzin, as well as the Imazethapir component. So that's really going to hit on a lot of those key weeds once we get past the mare's tail, because we know we've got giant rag, water hemp, as well as foxtail that we're going to be contending with after that initial burn down application. And so you can see those are all doing really well. And then that sets up the, the cheetah glufosinate application up really well for success so that you have small weed size and a manageable pop manageable population when it comes to uh, your post application so when we talk about 
burn down herbicides in the new farm portfolio, whether we're out west in Kosher or dealing with Palmer pigweed coming up in the early spring and our burn down. Here's the main things that we would like to, you know, drive home and kind of our guiding principles is that when we do have those windows in the fall and the spring for pre-plant burn down windows, let's try to utilize those that can help spread the workload out and also maximize the efficacy when some of these weeds are most susceptible. Um, when we look at our portfolio, we we're developing uh, products that are utilizing multiple modes of actions. And certainly if we can deploy those with the right formulations, use, such as the esters in the early spring and using the right spray volume and pairing the right adjuvant technology with that, all of those things come into play to uh, maximizing our burn down success. And then with products like Panther MTZ and Panther Pro, you can utilize those residual products and uh, utilize them in the the burn down window and and get the most out of the out of those as well. And so many other things come into play. We talk about layering residual herbicides and uh, using products that complement each other. And certainly we keep that in mind when it comes to our recommendations and uh, the things that we're developing in our pipeline. And uh, the other thing too, and there's not only the herbicide. Uh, components to to our portfolio and recommendations. We're thinking about, you know, crop rotation, uh, row spacings, uh, cover crops. All of those things certainly come into play to managing resistant weeds when uh, when developing recommendations as well. And so, just to finish up, as we look at our portfolio, uh, a number of key chemistries that that we lean on in building our burn down recommendations. It starts with 2,4-D, but it certainly doesn't end there. We have straight dicamba, the 2,4-D dicamba combinations that we talked about, Burnmaster and Spitfire specifically. As we get into Kosha country and out west, the three-way of 2,4-D dicamba and fluoroxapir has been very successful in Scorch. And then we continue to develop uh, unique solutions, be it the liquid formulation of Panther SC or our three or two-way combinations of Panther Pro and Panther MTZ to bring our customers a lot of flexibility in managing these burn down weeds and these burn down windows. A couple of other new things too, as I wrap up here today, as we look at our growing portfolio of solutions, we've recently announced the addition of Goal 2XL and Goal Tender coming into our portfolio. So some additional herbicide tools that uh, we'll continue to evaluate opportunities in cotton as well as the tree and nut uh, crop market as well. And then obviously Trunemco, a uh, uh, innovative nematode technology for seed treatment. And you might think, well, what does the seed treatment have to do with uh, burn down and soybeans? But think about it. We know that some of these winter annual weeds like uh, purple dead nettle and henbit can be bridges for nematodes. And so managing uh, some of these winter annuals and burn down can also release or reduce uh, some of the pressure for for nematodes and so obviously we are thinking about nematode solutions as well when it comes to our full portfolio so a lot of information here packed today i thank you for joining us and uh, as always if you have any questions additional needs feel free to reach out to myself or others of your new farm team thanks again and i'll throw it back to you chris thank you dan and thanks to everyone who took the time to watch the webinar if you'd like additional information about the topics or products highlighted today, please visit our website at newfarm.com slash uscrop.